welcome to Echo Assembly of God's online service. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you survived the snow last week and uh, we are back in person today. And I wanna thank you for also joining us online this morning. If you could do me a favor, drop a comment below. Let us know that you're here. We would love to hear from you. If this is your first time with us this morning, welcome. Thank you for choosing to worship with us. Our, our online host at this time will be putting a link to our digital connect card. That's the best way to get more information about any of the events we have going on at our church or any information in general you would like about um, our church or anything we have happening. Even if you have a prayer request, that's a great way to get a hold of us. Um, so make sure to fill that out. If you are watching outside of Sunday morning, make sure to check the video description box and you'll find that link there as well. Well, last week we wrapped up our 21 days of prayer and fasting and we would love to hear what God did in your life. So if you could do me a favor, take a quick moment sometime this week and email us at info at and just share a few lines of a testimony of what God did through you um, during our 21 days of prayer. We would, like I said, we would just love to hear what God's been doing. We've got a lot of exciting things happening here at the church. And the first is every Wednesday night, our um, weekly Bible study meets. We meet in person from 7 to 8.15 p.m. Currently, we're going through the book of Judges in the Old Testament. It's been a really great study. If you're looking to get into God's Word, we would love for you to come out and join us. All are welcome and you can come out at any time. Something else that's pretty exciting is our youth ministry has finally kicked off. We've had a lot of different snow and different things happening, but they have officially kicked off. And the exciting thing is now they're meeting every single week from seven to nine. All of the sixth and 12th graders in the community are invited to come out. Um, we've got a great message, games, giveaways. It's a really great time. Make sure to tell all the students you know that they're more than welcome to come out. And um, the other exciting thing happening is our Lord's Cupboard is happening this month. Um, every month we have an opportunity to reach families in our community in a real and tangible way by giving out free food and this week it's going to be the 14th and 15th we will be packing boxes on the 14th handing out on the 15th even if you can just come out for a couple hours we would love to have you out make sure to fill out our digital connect card and someone will be in contact with you for more information and finally as always i want to thank you so much for continuing to be faithful in your giving god does amazing things when we trust him and we put our faith in him and one of the biggest areas we can put our faith in god is through our finances so thank you for continuing to be faithful in that we've got three easy safe ways to continue to give either online by mail or through our app and you can check out all of those and you can go to our website to get some more information before we turn it over to Pastor Mike, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you just for another opportunity to get into your word, to learn more about who you are and to grow closer to you. Father, we pray that you would just be, um, your Holy Spirit would just work through this message, speak to our hearts and change and transform us today. Father, we pray this in your holy and precious son's name, amen. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. I'm glad that you're here. You know, we're in our sermon series called This Is Us, where we're talking about uh, the vision, the mission statement, the core values, the things that we are as, as believers in Jesus Christ, and also as our church as well, and what we believe God wants to do. And so before we jump in today, like Christine said, if you have what we would call a God story, in other words, if God has moved through your life over maybe through the 21 days of prayer and fasting, or maybe just over the last couple months, you've been sensing God moving in your life, would you let us know? Share a little testimony with us. Email me at info at accoag.com. We're putting all these together. We already have had some people that have uh, shared some God stories with us. We would love to hear yours, hear what God is doing in your life. Maybe it was a prayer request that you had answered. Maybe you see how God started to change your life, whatever it may be. Would you share it with us? Because we really want to start putting all these testimonies together and then letting people know all that God is doing. Because your testimony can be an encouragement to someone else. And so if you've been with us the last several weeks, we've been talking about vision and mission and different things like that. And we talked about how our mission statement is simply to 
lead people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what we want to do. This isn't earth-shattering. We get this from God's Word that we're called to lead people into a life-changing, life-transforming relationship with Jesus Christ. Everything we do is about that. And then the how we go about it, kind of our, I like to say our style or our personality is kind of like a builder. Our ministry philosophy is we want to build upon everything we're doing. In other words, whenever we do anything for the Lord, we want to make sure that we believe that He's leading us to do it. And then secondly, that as we do it, we're building upon it, making it better, have, having a, a bigger reach, uh, being able to build relationships more effectively with people, whatever it takes to help lead people towards Jesus Christ so that their life can be changed and transformed. And the last several weeks, we've been talking about our vision statement. And this is the idea of what we believe God has for each and every one of his children, each and every one of his his followers. And our vision is this, is that we have a desire that every person would come to know Jesus Christ or to know God personally, know Jesus Christ. They'd find their freedom in Christ, begin to discover their purpose, and then make a difference in their family, their community, and all the world. Now, over the last several weeks, I've been showing you this, I call it my my cheesy chart or my cheesy circle that I kind of created, but it's this idea that for us to grow closer to Jesus, obviously there's a starting point, but it starts with knowing God personally, intimately, not a religion, but a relationship. God wants to know you personally. He wants to know me personally. We can have a real, vibrant, alive relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then as we give our life to Christ and we surrender ourselves to Him, what happens? We begin to find freedom in our life from this sin because He's freed us from sin and death. But not just in a general way like, oh, I'm free from sin and death. But no, He begins to work in your life and He looks for those hurts those bad habits, those hang-ups, that a sin that you keep going back to, the, the lies that we've believed about ourselves. maybe someone's told us in the past, or maybe there's just things in our past that we're having a hard time getting over. You know what? He wants to begin to heal. The power of the Holy Spirit wants to come in and heal those hurts, begin to transform us and to move in our life and make us more and more like His Son, Jesus. We call that sanctification. And then last week, we talked about this idea that you were created on purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose. God has a purpose for your life. Somebody may have told you you're an accident. Somebody may, told, may have told you in the past that you're not good enough or you're not worth Let me tell you something. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He's got a general purpose. We talked about this idea that we're to love God, love others, abide in Him, and that the, the general purpose is to live for Him, surrender to Him, and then also uh, love Him and love other people. And help people find Jesus. But then there's a specific purpose that we have. And sometimes it's positional. If you're a husband, you have the position of a husband over your wife. There's a specific uh, uh, purpose God has for how you're to be the man, the, the, the husband in the, in the relationship. And the same with the, the wife. If you're a mom or a dad, you're in a position of of purpose over your kids, to lead them up, to teach them who Jesus Christ is. And then also God's got a call on your life, specifically something he wants to use you to do. He's wired you in a certain way, giving you certain spiritual gifts, personality, experiences you've gone through so that he can use you to build his kingdom here on earth. So powerful when you begin to discover that you have a purpose. And then as we kind of walk through this in our relationship with him and we begin to deepen our relationship with him, we discover that he's using us to make a difference in this world, that he wants to use you to make a difference, to influence people towards him, to point people towards him. And then as we begin to go through this circle, what happens is is we begin to learn and know more about God. Our relationship with him goes deeper. It's kind of like I always say, I use the analogy of my wife, like I love my wife. And when I first married her, I loved her so much. We've been married seven years now, and I love her even more than the first time uh, I, I met her or the, the first the, when we got married. My love has continued to grow and deepen. The, the, the love roots, if I could call it that, have grown, grown deeper into uh, our, our life as we get to know each other better. It's the same with God. And so this is a cycle that just continues on and on and on. God's always moving in our life. He's always wanting us to know Him more. He's always moving in those areas of our life that 
we struggle with and sin. He wants us to live, discover who we are in Christ and live that out so that what? So we can be influencers and make a difference in this world. I know so many times what happens in our life is, is we get sidetracked or we don't think we can make a difference. Maybe we believe lies that we're, we can't influence anybody or we can't help anybody, but that's simply not true. God has created you to be an influencer. Now, I'm not talking Instagram, Facebook, social media influencer, maybe, but what I'm talking about is God wants to use you in your circles of influence to make a difference in people's lives. God wants to use you to make a difference in this world. And sometimes when we get distracted from what God has for us, I'll say when we get distracted from God's vision, what happens is we find our life, we begin to focus on other things instead of making the difference that God's called us to make. I heard uh, Pastor Chris Hodges from Church of the Highlands, he created this list that I thought was really good. He said, instead of making a difference, a lot of times what happens is we try to make a name for ourselves. We focus on making ourselves known instead of making God's, God known. And then sometimes we decide on, well, I'm going to make a dime. I'm not going to make a difference. In other words, I'm going to spend all my time working. I make as much money as I can because my value is in how much money I have or my security is in my money. And so we begin to focus on money or making a name for ourselves. Or sometimes we just we have a plan. In other words, my focus isn't on making a difference in other people's lives. My focus is on me, my plan for my life, what I'm going to get out of it. And if you get in my way, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to roll over you because it's my plan for my life because it's all about me. Also, we can see where we wind up making excuses. I can't help. I can't make a difference. So therefore, I'll just do my own thing. And usually what happens is we wind up making a mess of our life. And I'm sure you've experienced this. I know if I've experienced this. I know there's a lot of young people in the world today, some, some older teenagers and 20-year-olds and even some 30-year-olds that are kind of meandering in life. Why? Because they haven't discovered their purpose. They haven't realized that God wants to use them to make a difference in this world. I want to show you a scripture. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says this, <clears throat> now to him who was able to do Follow these words exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that's at work within us. You know what? God it wants, because God lives inside of you, because you've got a relationship with him, you're abiding with him, you're living a life of sanctification, allowing him to move in your life and transform you and make you more like his son, Jesus. You understand that you've got a destiny and a purpose for your life, and you, you, you know that God wants to make a difference in you. He's going to make a difference. Why? Because of you? No, because of the power of God that's inside of you. The Holy Spirit's inside of you, and he's going to do more. He's going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above everything that we can think or ask. Just, just let that sink in for just a moment. That you have a, some ideas and thoughts. God's going to do more than you could ever imagine in your life. I, I put this down here. Jesus can do more with your life than you will ever be able to do on your own. Jesus can do more with your life than you will ever to be able to do on your own. It's when we begin to surrender our life to him and understand that he is the one who is moving in our life. He's the one who gives us a purpose. Man, we can begin to make a difference like never before. And I'm not talking about a difference that is just a little bit. I'm talking about like huge differences in people's lives. Now, I, I know, I know, you might be like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, like, I can't do big things for God. God's got great things inside of you. He does. And there was a story I heard a, a long, long time ago that I thought was really good, and the story kind of goes like this. <clears throat> There's a young kid, he's walking along the beach or, or the shore, and uh, all these starfish have been washed up on the shore. And so there's like literally hundreds and hundreds of starfish all over the place. And so the little boy's walking, he picks one up and he throws it back into the ocean. And then he goes to another one, he picks it up and he throws it back into the ocean. He sees another one, he picks it up and he throws it back in the ocean. And as he's doing this repeatedly, an, an older gentleman walks by and he says, what are you doing? You can't make a difference because there's too many of them. You can't help all of them. You can't save all of them. You can't make a difference in all their life. In other words, the gentleman's perspective was, it's not going to make that big of a difference. And the little boy, he picked up a starfish, and he looked at it, and he looked at the man, and he said, 
I made a difference in this one's life, and he tossed it back into the ocean. And then he picked up another starfish and said, I made a difference in this person's life, and then he threw it back in the ocean. Think about that. You, the impact that we have on people, on their lives, think of how many people have impacted your life. Maybe it was a teacher. Think about how your mom and dad impacted your life, and sometimes negatively, but hopefully for the positive, right? Right? Somebody shared Jesus with you, and they impacted your life for eternity. Listen, God is going to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can think or ask of him. All we just need to do is be faithful to him and do what he's called us to do. Now, I want to let you in on a little secret. I'm going to tell you the secret to making a difference in people's lives. Ready? Here it is. This is the secret. Write this down. It's simply this. The secret to making a difference in people's lives is simply to serve. It's simply to serve them, to serve them, to go out of your way to bless somebody, to to help them. uh, In the church world, we say sometimes, don't look for a title, but look for a towel. Like, how could I serve you? In Mark chapter 10, Jesus said, he called his disciples together, and he said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles, they lord it over them. And their high officials, they exercise authority over them. Listen to what Jesus said. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave at all. And then Jesus said this. And this is kind of like the mic drop the punchline, the, 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 the right-left hook, as it were. Jesus said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Do you know what? When we serve others, when we give of ourselves to others, why do we do that? Because we want to make a difference in their life. We want to have an eternal impact. We want to make such a difference that it changes the course of their life forever. Just like people have done that for you in your life. They've made a difference. And it's affected you your entire life. Jesus said, if you want to be great, then you need to serve. If, if you want to be the, the greatest, be a servant to other people. Serve, help people. Be a blessing to people. Jesus said, that's what I did. I did not come to serve, or I did not come to be served. I came to serve. And he goes, to give my life, to give myself as a ransom for many. Can I tell you that when you begin to serve other people the way Jesus served other people, you're showing them who Jesus is. One of my favorite phrases, you're Jesus with skin on. You're the hands, you're the feet of Jesus Christ. You can share God's love. You can share God's grace. You can share God's mercy. You can share God's forgiveness with people. And you can make a difference in somebody's life. I want to show you a couple things about serving, some truths about serving. The first thing is that we're never more like Jesus than when we serve. This is so true. We're never more like Jesus than when we serve. When we are giving of ourselves, when we're helping somebody out, what are we doing? We're living our life the same way Jesus did. Now, we don't do it perfectly. He lived this life perfectly. He was without sin. We always bring a level of mess up as we do it or a level of messiness in our relationships, don't we? We never do it perfectly, and that's okay, because God still uses us anyway. And so when we serve, we're being more and more like Jesus. That's what that verse said in Mark chapter 10, that Jesus said, do not come, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. When we serve other people, we're acting and living like Jesus did. We're not Jesus but we're beginning to act and live like him. And what happens is, because we're living that out by the power of the Holy Spirit in our life, he begins to move in your heart. He begins to show you things about yourself. He begins to show you things about other people. And he allows you to begin to build bridges in people's lives and literally give the grace of God to other people. The second truth about serving is this is that you were created to be an influence. I think this is so important and so powerful to understand. You were created to be an influence. You weren't created just to exist. You weren't created to be served. 
You were created so that you could impact, influence powerfully other people's lives because of God inside of you. That's why you were created. We talked a little bit about this last week, about discovering your purpose. And the, we talked about our shape, the spiritual gifts, the heart, the, the things that we love, our abilities, the natural talents, our personalities. And we talked about Myers-Briggs and then the experiences that you, that you do, have gone through. And we talked about how even the bad experiences, the suffering we've dealt with, like God never wastes a hurt. If you haven't watched that or if you haven't got your spiritual gift assessment or uh, the Myers-Briggs, let me know. I'll send all that to you. Just fill out a digital connect card. But God's designed you, wired you, created you to make a difference in other people's lives, to love God and what? Love others others and we can make a difference. Let me just show you a few things that the Bible says about you and about me as we live for Jesus Christ, as we're followers of him, as we abide in him, we surrender our lives, we repent of the sins in our life and we keep our eyes fixed on him. This is what the Bible says you are. He calls you an influencer. Listen, he says you're a new creation. You're a brand new creation. Listen, you don't have to live in the past anymore of what maybe people have told you or what even you thought of yourself. The Bible says that when you ask Jesus Christ be your Lord and Savior, you're a brand new creation. You're a brand new person. You're starting fresh. The slate has been wiped clean and you're a brand new creation. You don't have the power of God living inside of you. Jesus said you're salt and you're the, the light of the world. And he said, listen, don't hide your light. Why? Put it on a stand for all to see so others can glorify your Father in heaven. You're an influencer. Also, you're Christ's ambassadors. You're a pro royal priesthood, a chosen generation. You've got the fruit of the Spirit inside of you. The Holy Spirit is manifesting love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control inside of you. Man, the Holy Spirit isn't just sitting on the back, in the back burner not doing anything. He's producing these characteristics, these godly characteristics, this righteousness in your life as you keep your eyes fixed on Him, you're repenting of your sins, you're abiding in Jesus, you're getting more to know Him, you're letting Him heal the hurts in your life. Powerful things are happening inside of you. You're being transformed. You're being sanctified. Not only that, but you've got the power of God within inside of you. The Bible says that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that lives inside of you and lives inside of me. Praise God. And then the third truth about serving is that it is the best way to remove self from selfish. I'm going to say that again. It's the best way to, to remove self from selfish. I don't know about you, but one of the things that I discovered in my life is I'm selfish. Matter of fact, when I got married, I realized how much more selfish I was. Maybe when you became a parent, you realized how selfish you really were, how much you like your time, the way you like it, how you like it. And then somebody begins to interrupt that time, and you're like, whoa, now you're impeding on me. It's so important for us to understand the flesh in us, the selfishness in us, the desire we have for us and only us. And one of the best ways to begin to remove that self from you, to, to kind of get you out of you, to get me out of me, is by serving somebody else, is by helping somebody else. And, and I'm not talking about helping somebody. You've experienced this, right? You've helped somebody. You, maybe you bless them in some way. And then you, they don't do something the way that you would want them to and you have this thought in your mind, man, I did that for you. I did this for you. I helped you here. I served you there. And all of a sudden, you get a little upset because you're like, I did this for you, but you didn't reciprocate back to me. Listen, that's not serving somebody the way Jesus serves them. Jesus served people without any expectation in return. Back in Mark, we read where Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, I came to serve, and to give my life as a ransom for many. In other words, God, Jesus realized many will not accept him, many will accept him. And so I think it's important for us to understand when we talk about serving somebody, when we really talk about getting the self out of us, having what John the Baptist said, that Jesus would increase in our life and we would decrease in our life, it's about serving people without expecting anything in return. It truly is. When we serve people for the simple fact that God loves us, 
God loves them. God wants a relationship with us. God wants a relationship with them. And he wants to use you to influence people, to share his love, to share his grace, to share his mercy. I'm not expecting anything in return. But I've learned that the best way for me to, to, to continue to allow God to move in my life is to put myself in the environment of serving other people and not expecting anything in return. The interesting thing is, is when you do serve somebody, now catch this, when you do serve somebody and that little thing raises up inside of you like, oh, well, they didn't do this for me or they didn't do that for me, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you going, I need to remove that from you. That, that's where I need to heal that hurt. You need to find freedom from that. In other words, when you serve, you should just serve with the love and glory of God. I serve for God. I serve Him. And I do that by serving other people. So if I don't get a reward from you, it doesn't matter because I know I'm not serving you so that you'll reward me. I'm serving God because He's a good God and all that He's done for me. It's a complete different 180. It's a different perspective. And the truth is when you serve other people, when you start putting other people first and you start serving them, it begins to change who you are on the inside. Really powerful when we talk about that. So when we talk about this, the three truths are we're never more like Jesus than when we serve. <clears throat> you were created to be an influence, and it's the best way to remove self from selfish is when you begin to serve and help other people. Now, within our vision that we have, there's three kind of components or three areas that we want to make a difference in. And so when we talk about our vision, we want to make a difference in three areas. The first area is within our family, and we put church and family together. In other words, your, your family, your, your immediate family, the people you live in the house with, that's your, immediately, your immediate family. Grandma, grandpa, ma, dad, brothers, sisters, right? Aunts, uncles that, are, that, are, that you're close to. And then we, also, we, then we enlarge the circle to our community. So we start with our family or our church family, and then we enlarge to the community, and then we enlarge it to around the world. These are the three areas that God wants to use you to make a difference in. Now, I want to talk about these real quick and talk about how that happens or what we can do. What I first want to do, though, is I, before we talk about the church, I want to focus on the family. Because maybe as you're with us today, you have family members who don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe it's your mom or your dad. Maybe it's a brother, sister, or maybe it's your husband. Boy, I don't know. Kids. But, but you like the, the one desire of your heart it's that they would have a relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you have a relationship and there's a lot of tension and conflict or hurt from it or offense or, or whatever. And, and sometimes what I found, and, and you've probably experienced this too, that our immediate family, the people who are closest to us that are family, sometimes they're the hardest to reach for Jesus Christ. They really are. They're the hardest to reach. It's because they know us. They're so familiar with us, and, and maybe they think you're crazy or you're nuts or you know, holy roller or whatever. So I just let me encourage you in this way. I want to encourage you with a scripture. This is what Jesus experienced in Mark chapter six, verse one to six. <clears throat> it says Jesus left there, and then Jesus went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he's performing? Now, now ready? Here we go. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him, and Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay the hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Here Jesus is in his own hometown where he was born, where he was raised, where everybody knew him, where his stepbrothers and sisters still lived. They knew he was the, the, the son of Mary. And so we see where he was in his own hometown and he couldn't do all the miracles and all the healings and all the things that he wanted to do. Why? Because the people knew him. In other words, they were familiar with him and they couldn't get past that familiarity and they had disbelief. I think sometimes that's what we experience in our own life with our own families, that they know us so well 
they were raised with us, that they're like, you know what, I'm too, you're too familiar to me, and there's so much disbelief in their life when we try to share Jesus with them. So let me encourage you with this, if I can. The, the way that I found to really make a difference in the life of my family, my immediate family, is simply this, to pray for them, to pray for them and to love them and show them grace and mercy and forgiveness the way Jesus did for me. And this is so important. I think sometimes we feel like, well, I need to call out the junk in their life. No, you don't. You know what? Let the Holy Spirit call out the junk in their life. You love them. Jesus' love is attractive. Let the Lord take care of them, clean them up, deal with their struggles and issues, just like the Lord's dealing with you with your struggles and issues. So what I've learned to do with my family is just love them and to serve them without expecting anything in return, even if they say something offensive, not getting offensive, not getting offended, forgiving them, loving them, showing them respect and love, but letting them know that I love Jesus and I'm going to serve him, I'm going to live for him. I invite them, allow them to be a part of what's happening, but that doesn't mean they're going to understand who Jesus is through me. And then I pray for them every day. Because the truth is, God loves them more than I love them. And God is chasing after them more than I could ever want or imagine. And so my encouragement, if you've got a family member, somebody you love, and you just wish they would come to know who Jesus Christ is, just love them and serve them and stand in the gap for them. Pray for them over and over again. And don't stop praying. Keep knocking on the door of heaven and saying, God, I'm trusting in you. You get their heart. You draw them to you. Lord, if it's not through me, fine, but you somebody else. That'd be my encouragement with family. And so when we talk about making a difference <clears throat> in our family, I, you know, pray for them and show them God's love and grace, just like somebody showed that to you. Within our church family, within our local church, Aco Assembly of God, you know, the way that you serve is with, through a ministry team. Be a part of a team here at the church where you're making a difference in people's lives. You're serving the Lord at church. You're part of the biblical community, serving people, rubbing shoulders with people, getting to know each other. We have so many different ministries here that you could be a part of. Here's a few that you can jump into. We've got a sound and media team that make the church sound good on Sunday mornings and run these slides. Uh, children's ministry, nursery, all the way up to elementary, youth ministry. We've got a care team that cares for people. We have a prayer team. You could be part of the prayer team, the greeters, the ushers. We've got a welcome team. Or music, maybe you sing or play. You love Jesus. Jesus, you want to do some worship music, coffee bar, maintenance, security. And all these opportunities are available to you and, and for all of us to serve. You know, we can be a part of what God's doing in a variety of different ways. But my encouragement is get involved in some team. Serve at least once or twice a month and making a difference in your local church, whether it's Echo Assembly of God or another church, and even online. Maybe you're watching online. Maybe for whatever reason, you can't become in person. For whatever reason, that's fine. Well, join us online. Be an online greeter. Be able to talk to people and say hello to people. And, and I realize that there's not like thousands of people commenting and all of that. But when you do comment, when you do greet people, it lets people know that somebody's there and that when they're ready to talk, you're there to talk to them. And so we've got online hosts that help do that. But man, I'd love to have three or four or five greeters and hosts all commenting and talking as we go through because it really makes a difference. And so even if you're online, serve in a ministry in some capacity. And then the next part of this making a difference is simply in our community. We enlarge it from our, our family and then also say our church family. And then we enlarge it to the community, the people that are around us in our community. And here's how you can serve within the community. You can serve through the outreaches and evangelism events that we do at the church. We have a ton of outreaches and evangelism events that we do all the time. There's usually one every couple months that we have. Now, I do want to say this. I want to talk about the difference between an outreach and evangelism event. Some, Because some people are like, if you do anything, you have to preach the Word of God. I, 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 don't, I disagree with that because I think sometimes you, when you serve, I'm sharing God's love, but I'm not hitting you over the head with a Bible. Like if I'm at a church and I'm doing something for somebody, they know I'm part of the church doing it. So they understand there's a reason why I'm doing it. And so to me, here's the difference. And outreach is just where we share the love of God by serving people. 
And we do that through the Lord's covered food distribution. We share the love of God. You don't have to come to our church to receive the food. You can just be here and we will help you. We'll get the food to you. It's really important for that we would understand that. It's not about having to be a part of our church. It's about we just want to serve, share the love of God with other people. And then evangelistic would be more sharing the word of God. So we're going to be doing a VBS, uh, our Easter Sunday service. We open up to the community for everyone to come. Man, we've got petting zoos and egg hunts and all these other things. That's simply an opportunity for us to share the word of God through those different things. And so each event allows us different opportunities. We've got some great opportunities coming up in the future that you can jump in and you can be a part of. Even if you've been watching in person or online, you can jump into one of these events and help us out. Some of these are outreaches where we just share the love of God by serving people and helping them and providing a great, uh, great environment. And then others are more evangelistic where we're talking about the Word of God and teaching who Jesus is and doing that. And, and each one of these outreaches, each one of these events are so powerful. And the most amazing thing is that we found a lot of favor within the township. The township is now asking us to come and be a part of these events, to bring our different children's games and different things that we do and to be a part of it. So I'm really excited about these different things. I'll show you a picture of a couple of the different things that we're going to be doing. Here you can see the Waterford Township. We're going to be part of the St. Patrick's Celebration, having out our carnival games. That's an outreach. We're not going to be talking about Jesus. We're just going to be sharing God's love with the community, letting them know we're here, hopefully building some bridges, a relationship with them. Obviously, our food distribution that we do every, the third Tuesday of every month is a great opportunity to, to help people in a real and tangible way. And the thing that I love about the Lord's Covered Food Distribution is the fact that we get a chance to get to know the people, to build a relationship with them. And there's so many people that come in and that we get a chance to pray for, that we get a chance to, to uh, love on and help and serve, not just by giving food, but in other ways as well. We also have an Easter egg hunt coming up for the township. Uh, the township invited us to come be a part of that. We're going to be doing a VBS this summer, our very first VBS. I don't think we've done a VBS for maybe 20 years. We're going to do a special three-day VBS. This is an evangelistic event. We're going to be talking about Jesus, who he is. Kids are going to come. They're going to have food, games, great Bible stories, and we're going to have an opportunity to get to know who Jesus is. So I'm really excited. These are just a few of the opportunities you can come and be a part of. You know, Easter Sunday is a really big event for us. You know, every time we normally do it, we bring in a petting zoo and different things for the kids, and we usually have a lot of kids, and people from the community come, and they'll listen to us talk about who Jesus is and the resurrection. and just an exciting time. But you can not only just Make a difference in your family and the local church by serving on a ministry, but come out to one of these outreaches and help us share the love of Jesus with people around us. And then the third area is simply this, is that we want to make a difference around the world. <clears throat> now, you might be like, wait, 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 how can I make a difference around the world? Well, we do that through uh, serving our missionaries and the mission organizations by doing two things. We support them financially and prayerfully, and we help send people to do that. Now, as you know, COVID has kind of messed up the sending part, but a lot of our missionaries, they're back on the mission field. We serve over 26 different missionaries. Here's a picture of all the different missionaries that we, we currently serve and some different mission organizations as well. They're all over the world. As a matter of fact, every month over the next several months, we're having new missionaries come in that we're going to be resupporting because we just did our mission, Faith Promise, and we raised over $30,000 for missions, which was amazing. You were a part of that. And so when, we, when you give financially, when you pray for these missionaries, you're helping to make a difference around the world. Why? Because we're partnering with them. If it wasn't for us, they wouldn't have the resources they need to go to a different country and make a difference. As a matter of fact, one of our, our church members, I call her our mission enthusiast, Julia Grant. If you remember on our mission Sunday, we normally have her share a little bit about what God's doing in the area of missions. Well, she's actually down in Guatemala right now she went on a mission trip to Operation Jabez, one of the ministries that we support, and I asked her to kind of tell us what she's going to be doing um, and, and what's happening down there at Jabez. So here's a quick little video from her telling her what she, what's happening. Hi guys, it's Julia, and first of all, I miss you guys so much. It feels so weird to not be with my church family on this Sunday morning, but I'm actually with another one of my church families in Guatemala, and it's just a little bit warmer here, so I'm super excited about that. 
Um, you may or may not know, but one of the missionaries that we support at ACO Assembly of God is called Operation Jabez. And Operation Jabez is located in the southern portion of Guatemala in a little town called Chiquimulia. That's where I am right now. I've been involved with Operation Jabez for about seven or eight years, so it's very near and dear to my heart. And what we do is we reach people for Jesus through evangelism, discipleship, education, and relief work. And we do that through a variety of different programs, including sewing classes to empower women in our community with a tangible skill that can really change their lives. Um, we do that through training seminars for local churches. We do that through community development programs and children's programs, through outreach events, and more. And so it has been a long time since I've actually been able to visit our team in Guatemala in person due to everything going on with COVID uh, and the car accident that I had this past year. So I am beyond thrilled to finally be able to visit our team in person and to begin to start dreaming about what God has for us in 2022. This trip serves a couple of purposes. Number one, just to get our team together, uh, moving forward in the same vision as we approach the upcoming year and as we move forward into what God has for the future. But also I'm gonna be jumping into children's ministry, to youth ministry, some preaching opportunities, um, and even, I hope, be able to join in on a training seminar that is supposed to be a surprise, but I think that I know is happening. So we have quite a lot of things going on that I am so excited for, and I want to thank you guys so much for your praying. I want to thank you for your support, um, and I want to thank you just for who you are to me as my church family. I miss you guys so much. I can't wait to come back um, to see you guys in person. It's really only going to be a week from now or so, but I miss you guys. Um, so I'll see you soon, and I can't wait to give you guys an update. Thank you guys so much for your praying, for your giving, and for your support. I love you guys, and I'll see you shortly. Bye. The awesome thing is, is you played a part in Julia going down to Guatemala. We helped support her. We gave her finances. We're praying for her while she's down there, and she's going to come back and share what the Lord has done in her life and in that ministry while she's down there. Just, you've partnered with her. You're helping her to reach people for Jesus Christ. You're helping her to make a difference around the world. And that's how we do it within our church, through the missionaries that we support and the people that we send. Next year, we're hoping to do a mission trip. You'd have an opportunity to go with us on, on a, to another country to share the love of Jesus. Right now with COVID, everything's still up in the air with all that, but we're something we're planning on doing for 2023. And so God wants to use you. Part of God's, I believe God's plan for your life, his vision for your life, is not only that you have a relationship with him, that he would continue to, to let you find freedom in his word and in his power, that you discover your purpose, then you'd make a difference, not only in your family's life, but in the local church by serving in a ministry, and not only just in our community by jumping into the different events that we're doing, but also around the world, that you would have an impact. And when you do, you begin to realize all that God's doing, he's so much bigger than you, and he can do exceedingly abundantly more above anything that we could think or we can ask. These are just the practical ways that you can begin to serve. I know sometimes people are like, well, I don't know where to begin. This is it. Listen, if you're a part of ACO Assembly God, I'm going to ask you to serve in one, these three capacities. Not in one of these three, but in three. We're praying for you and your family. We're praying that you and your whole family would come to know who Jesus is. And I want you to serve in a ministry in the church on a regular basis. Not once a year, but all the time. Once a month, maybe twice a month. Pick a ministry that you enjoy, something that excites you, and be a part of it. And then also ask you to join us for these outreaches and evangelism. When we do these outreaches, I ask you to give me two hours. So we've got a St. Patrick's Day. It's a six-hour event. Give me two hours. You can sign up to be a part of it. Help us. Just stand at the table. Give out different swag we have, the different carnival games for the kids. We give them candy when they play. Just build relationships with the community. It's a great time. I'm going to ask you to be at all of our community events. Why? Because that's how we make a difference. And then the next is around the world. By some of you, so many of you have already supported the missionaries, praying for them and giving finances. If you haven't done that, fill out a mission faith promise. I'm going to ask our online host to put that in the chat now. It's also in the bio above in the video. Man, fill that out. Let God use you to make a difference in this world. And listen, can I be honest with you? I'm going to tell you something. This may step on your toes a little bit, but the truth is you do what you want to do. Like you're going to find time for what you want to do. You know, when, when somebody passes away that we love, we may not have time to go to the funeral, 
but we make time because it's important to us. Can I tell you something? When you start serving the Lord, you start making a difference. Sometimes you need to set time aside to go serve the Lord. And that time is a little bit of a sacrifice. You're surrendering a little bit of you. But when you begin to do that, amazing things begin to happen in your life. Listen, let me pray for you. And again, I'm not letting you off the hook. I'm expecting you to jump in in some capacity, in some way, because God wants to use you to make a difference in your family, in our local church, in our community, and around the world. So jump in. Fill out that digital connect card if I can help you or serve you. You have any questions or you want to jump in, we'll get you started so you can take those next steps. Man, I love you so much. I'm excited. Can you tell I'm excited for you? I'm excited about what God's doing in your life. I'm excited how he's moving. I want to hear those stories. I want to pray for you, pray for your family. Listen, if you've got a family member who doesn't know Jesus, fill out that digital connect card. Give us their name and we'll just start praying for them. We'll stand in the gap with you that they would come to know the Lord. Let's do this together. Man, I love you so much. Let me pray for you. And again, if we can serve you, let me know. Let's pray. So Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for each person, every family member that's watching right now. Lord God, I thank you for how you've, you're moving in our life and transforming us, Lord God. And Father, I thank you that you've created us to be influencers. You've created us to make a difference in this world. I thank you, Lord, for each person that is watching. It's not an accident that they're watching. Lord, stir their hearts up to, to live a life that makes a difference in their family, in the local church, in their community, and around the world. Father, I pray that your spirit would guide us and direct us to what you've called us to do, and that we would continue to grow closer to you and deeper in our faith. Father, lead each person. I pray a blessing upon them and their families, Lord God, that you would continue to move in their life and touch their lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, I'm so glad you were with us this morning. Before we finish up the service, I wanted to remind you of something. You know, March 2nd is Ash Wednesday. We're going to be having a very special Wednesday night prayer and praise service. Love for you to join us in person. It's not going to be online, only in person. Love to have you come out and pray to uh, enjoy that time. It's an opportunity for us to get to know God a little better when we spend time in that environment as a body of Christ in a biblical community. Love to have you a part of that. If not, let us know how we can serve you. I love you. God bless you and have a great, great week.